The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Hello for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spinner. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spinoff member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz/donate. It is October 2000. We've survived Y2K, but Hobbit fever is just around the corner as Peter Jackson adds the final touches to the Fellowship of the Ring. Anastasia donned tiny orange glasses to protect her eyes from the blazing success of I'm Out of Love, the biggest song of the year. Spirits were high and the time was right for TV3 to launch a competition that still baffles everyone who remembers it a quarter century on. Join us as we remember when we stuck telly dots on our tellies. Or did we? (laughs) What? Welcome back to Remember When. This is your weekly pop culture podcast in Aotearoa. My name is Alex Casey. I'm joined by two people who are ironically both stuck to the corner of my screen, just like a tally dot themselves. Jane Yee and Duncan Grieve, welcome. Hi, Alex. This is going to be a real ride because I do not remember when. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I, I mean, I also don't remember when, but I feel like my excuse is that I turned 21 in October of uh, <gasps> the year 2000. Wow. And I was basically underneath a 30 box of Lion Red cans the whole time. So it's, Wait, what did you do for fine. your 21st and was I there? You surely were there. Surely I was there. Surely. You, were not watching home Im- you were not watching Home Improvement sticking things to the corner of your TVs <laughs> while mean, doing probably... a yardie? <laughs> It was one of the, it's one of the great regrets of my youth is the the lack of dotage. Can I just yeah. interrupt to give a little bit of another tidbit? In October two thousand, uh, I was born. <gasps> oh, Happy oh, Telly Dot gosh. birthday, Samuel! That's Samuel, by Thank the way, you our very producer. Much. Buried the lead there. But yes, this is kind of an avant-garde take on the format because I don't actually remember this either. (laughs) But the reason this is kind of, there was a sense of urgency around tally dots because it was something that was a huge conversation topic in the Real Pod Corner, our beloved um, Facebook group led by uh, Mayor Wayne Lewis, who remembers it well. And the spin-off's own Tara Ward, our fantastic TV writer, has been piecing together this uh, deep dive investigation into tally dots, what they were, if they worked. Hopefully, uh, when this is out, you should be able to read it. And I just want to thank her because she's provided the entirety of the information <laughs> <laughs> that I am about to tell you today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, before we go on, do we just want to talk about, Duncan, you obviously having your 21st, you know, with wizard staff, et cetera. But <laughs> what were we doing in the year 2000 and what television were you watching? Year 2000, I was, uh, that was my last year at university. And funnily, when you talk about dots, it was my first ever broadcasting job was in 2000 for a radio station called The Dot, which was an alternative (gasps) radio station called 96.1, run out of what was then the radio network, which is now NZME. But uh, I don't remember the telly dots. And I, I feel like this might be a problem going forward with Remember When, that... It doesn't mean I didn't experience them at the time. It's just that I'm a little bit old. And, mm. some, you know, there's some I've had to make space in my brain for new memories. And I've just I've cherry-picked which memories that I've retained. And I may well have stuck a dot on my telly. I just can't really recall. When you sent through some of the photos, I was like, mm, it's ringing a kind of a bell. Yeah, it's like a half bell. Um, the other thing, the other big thing, much bigger thing, to be honest, is uh, that uh, Jet P. Hammer, my, my beloved eldest daughter, was also born in uh, October 2000. <laughs> um, wow. So, so huge, huge month uh, for me. And, and yet, the more we talk about it, 
the more there are these sort of vague, you know, like like it's like an alarm in a building two or three streets away. It's still perceptible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. not really it's I'm I'm not I'm not fleeing the building. Well I do think this is something we should explore with Remember When is those pop culture black holes as well. Because I also think not to get too off track, but I think New Zealand Idol season three also sits in there. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's just like these moments that happened. We were all there for it. We were all watching T V yeah. but only a chosen few for whatever reason remember it. Um, I was mm, nine. <laughs> I feel like I'm always nine. <laughs> 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 I, maybe I'm not good at math. I kind of always been nine, but I think I was still nine when this happened. Obviously, watched a lot of TV, WN TV, of course. What now? Uh, <laughs> you would have been <laughs> real right. Charts. You would have been right in the home improvement demo. There. Well, exactly. It was like the dream run. The dream run when you're that age is the home improvement, the friends, the Simpsons before dinner, you know, mm, and just mm. cramming it all in and getting so excited. And yet, I've got nothing <laughs> either. So let me tell you a little bit about what it was. So it was late 2000, TV3 launched this massive promotion called Tally Dots. They released 5 million of them Whoa. around the country to go in retailers. I think there was it was KFC, BP, and I think you could get them in the TV guide too. Absolutely wild. Um, Absolutely wild that I that I missed that considering how much I frequented BPs and KFCs back then. You KFCs. really did though. That's crazy. <laughs> like you sitting in a car at a like pre or post a gas station was a huge part of your culture at the time. I used to do this awful thing where I'd like someone would go in to buy something, like a Kit Kat or whatever, a telly dot, and I would drive off. On my friends, because I was like always the driver, and so I was just like this insane power trip where I would like as a gag just drive off and then like come back thirty seconds later. But anyway, that's, that's why they're, they're not sharing their tally dots with you. <laughs> 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 <Maybe that's why. laughs> they want them all for themselves. So there's a press release from the time next week. TV three will launch Tally Dots, a promotion which uses new technology that allows marketers to check whether their ads are being watched. Retailers, yeah, retailers, BP, fast food restaurant brands, and TV Guide will trial the technology, which has not yet been used on English speaking TV anywhere in the world. So they were like these little, this almost the size of like a 50 cent coin, actually quite reminiscent of a Tazo, if anyone here remembers Tazos. Shit. Samuel, do you remember Tazos? Absolutely not. Oh this my is God. Remember when Tazos, but also remember when the 50 cent coin was a lot more chunky. Yeah, I do. I remember that. Because <laughs> that's the size we're talking, like a decent, you know, a decent thing on your on the corner of your screen. And so the idea was that you would stick it on your screen, it would collect some sort of data, which we'll talk about soon. You'd send it in for the chance to win <laughs> one of two Holden Barinas. One of 20 portable Panasonic CD players, yeah. a club med holiday, or a grand total prize of $333,333. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's a like, that's a lot of money today. That's an insane amount of money. a whole street worth of uh, Maldi Villas for that back in the day. <laughs> Very TV3. But, well, yeah, the other thing that's really buzzy about it uh, is that they're, they're so brazenly saying... This is about getting efficient data to, yeah. around our marketing, uh, you know, process. And everyone's like, oh, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So the idea was that during certain shows, including Home Improvement, a Tally Dot logo would pop up in the corner of the screen and you would have to, like, hastily peel off the Tally Dot, <laughs> stick it on, and then somehow within the dot, there was a piece of film that was activated. Now, this is where we get into, I don't know what the hell's going on. Activated by a certain kind of light that would then record on the film that could prove whether you had watched the entire program, including ads, or not. I don't it's believe came... it, this. <laughs> I, just, I just I do not believe this technology existed the I don't believe this technology exists yeah, this now. feels like aspirational for us now like like this is like nuclear fusion you know where we I can know. dream about it it's theoretically possible <laughs> it can't kind of been actualized and distributed you know with our giant TVs not not what? giant in terms of the size of the screen just the ones that are about three feet behind them are we talking about tiny computers like five million tiny little computers or are we talking about like and I feel like this is probably more true like a little bit of litmus paper or something uh, the kind of like light activated equivalent where it just leaves a little stain on the paper 
But that won't give them the sort of information about how much you've watched. All it would show is like if a piece of paper had changed colour. Exactly. There was a lot of, I'll get into it later, but there was actually quite a few conspiracies <laughs> around the dots that went global around what they were recording and why and what the technology actually was. But by all accounts, it appears to just be a little bit of something sort of film that once exposed to light changes colour. But the instruction came with it, do not change the channel while this while the telly dot is stuck on the TV. <laughs> it will interrupt the transition, the, tel- the transmission, sorry. The telly dot will not work. <laughs> It's not true, right? That's not true. It's just their way of TV making TV. sure you're watching. Well, such a cool renegade channel, eh? Like they, they launched with <laughs> merch, so you get TV three like gym bags, and they just they're still like... doing that until very recently. I got one of my um, cousins worked there and gave me this beautiful beach bag, beautiful TV three beach bag, like <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> Do you find it hard staying optimistic with all the financial news in the media? I'm Bernard Hickey, and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I'm here to help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics in Aotearoa. So join the conversation every Friday on When the Facts Change, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in partnership with KiwiBank. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabel Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Um, but this, so yeah, it was being trialled in New Zealand, it had gone around Europe, it, it was Hungarian technology, um, and around the same time that it arrived here they also had it in australia launched as an adopt a dot kind of promo which we have an ad for which we can enjoy now when you purchase fuel at any bp service station and spend five dollars in the store you can adopt a dot power them up on channel seven return them to bp and watch seven for prize draws I got the dot today. wow it tells it's us nothing so interesting right like you watch the ad and you have no, I feel like I know less now. No, I know. About, about You've actually it. taken information away that we've already talked about and we're blank slate. Mm. We're in the negative. What's funny about the promo is it's, yeah, they've decided to like personify the dot in this moment and now it becomes something that you kind of care for, like a Tamagotchi or something. <laughs> but again, sheds no light on what the hell is actually going on inside the dot, which is possibly why... There was actually quite a lot of controversy about tally dots, not 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 just in New Zealand, but around the world. Um, Tara found this incredible article about the tally dot saga in Germany, where it was called Dotwin. <laughs> so they released 50 million Dotwins across Germany. And this author, Torstein Kleins, wrote an article called The Dotwin Conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> in which an anonymous source revealed to him that the inside of the 38 millimeter cardboard cycle contains a quote unquote mysterious controller <laughs> called what? CC128A4. The miraculous chip would record not only the sound of the program where the dot would be glued, but also the voice of viewers around the television. This is what I was worried this about. Nothing of this can be true. The author continued, these hooded creatures have only one purpose, to spy. <laughs> hooded creatures. But to be clear, the Dotwin makers quickly came out and said, Dotwin does not contain a chip. Anyone who wants to be sure can easily verify this by disassembling Dotwin into its individual components. And then a separate German newspaper cut into it with a kitchen knife and found a cardboard layer, aluminium foil, and a pink layer of film. So there was okay. no chip. It took someone to release a, a massive thesis on this conspiracy theory before someone took to it with a craft knife, which is beyond, like, surely, surely any journalist with their soul is doing that the moment they pick up the, a, a dot on the very first day. The thing that, it, it strikes me as a kind of a forerunner to the, um, you know, the COVID vaccine contains sort of nanoparticle chips that are monitoring your every move kind of thing. But at least back then, you know, like the, the, the disproof was, you know, like technology was, was so so cute and gumby that, you you know, like you, you could you could do it with a craft knife. Now, you know, 
the the whole point is that it's so tiny that it can never be dis- disproven. Uh, I don't know. It can times. be disproven with like common sense. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there's that. Can you imagine if they tried, if TVNZ tried to do dot win now? Like, <laughs> there would be, Parliament would burn. <laughs> or, or would it, would it, I just don't think TV has that power at all. I just don't think people are paying attention. In fact, controversial fold desk take, I'm just not, I, I think that they definitely don't want to know whether you're watching TV because most likely you're They're not going to like what they the hear. TV might be on. <laughs> But yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't want that data anymore. Like back then, we had nothing, nothing. <laughs> but they were really li- relying on people's gullibility too with that whole don't change the channel thing because obviously the technology was extremely simple. It was just about exposing it some film to some light and it wouldn't have mattered what channel you were on. But that was mm. their a kind of way of just ensuring that you did watch was to threaten you with the fact you might ruin the dot's integrity and therefore not win a prize if you change the channel. <laughs> And, and did they, surely they didn't check. Like, there's no just giant sort of 10 football field size factory full of like people just running some test over these dots that they got sent in. Millions and millions of them. <laughs> like, it, it didn't, the most basic kind of sense check would have revealed that nothing about this can be real. And yet, <laughs> by the sounds of it, it gripped a nation. Do you know what would have happened in the wake of this? Is someone went, hey, I know like you've made all these dots and that's great and it cost us bazillions of dollars to do it and it's cool because it got people watching, but what about if we just stuck a graphic up on screen like five times throughout the course of a show and be like, you have to put together the secret combo of words and just write that on a piece of paper and drop it into your BP? Because <laughs> it's the same thing. They couldn't. They it's couldn't. A... They needed the glue. <laughs> they needed what the What kind stick. of glue? What kind of adhesive well, are you talking? Uh... What I found, so yes, it captured the nation, but there were some naysayers locally. I found some, I, Tara, found some (laughs) forums um, where people questioned the validity of it. A lot of people complained about the gluey residue left Mm. on the TV. (laughs) Is this Geek Zone? Is that where the forums are? It might have been like, I think it was actually like a Google group, would you believe it, from 2000. Um, There's also some stuff I think on... Oh, no, Reddit wasn't around, was it? So people remembering from Reddit times. Um, But there was also talk of school kids who figured out that you could actually microwave the telly dots and activate the film that way. (laughs) Oh. And there were people sharing hacks and stuff. So a lot of people were like, I just simply pop the telly dot on, put the TV on mute, and go about my business. (laughs) I mean, it feels to me like you just take the back off the telly dot sticker and that does the job, that it's all smoke and mirrors. It's just to yeah. get you to think that you have to watch this show. There was a local local critic, Peter Calder, wrote for the New yeah. Zealand Herald. Uh, I have this image of a home viewer on their hands and knees in front of the glaring tube, squinting and grunting as he or she attempts to adhere the infernal device. Oh, I love Peter Calder. Oh, that's it's really dramatic. Critic. It's not that hard to stick something to something. I know. The pose, worse than undignified, is astonishly, astonishingly suggestive of the relationship between television channels and their audiences. This interaction looks sub- suspiciously like submission or cargo cult worship even. That we should participate so actively in our own capture would be funny if it were not so sad. Oh, Peter, you just, you, social media is coming, mate. I and, know, uh, he doesn't know. Peter Calder was a theatre critic and, I, and actually I, I, thought, I think a really good one. Um, he wrote this great piece a few years later d- defending the role of the critic in the face of an onslaught from Oliver Driver, who was basically just saying critics are there to, to boost the local... Uh, industry and and peter called a very eloquently defended it. i don't know if his telly got dot piece you know <laughs> has stood the test of time in quite the same way it, it does a telling though in that uh what you've just read alex about people being on their hands and knees and I'm like why would people but of course because we have these massive tube tallies and they were sitting on these low little stands that you know to reach the bottom corner of your screen you're gonna have to get either on hands and knees or bend over quite a way um, so just remember as well that the, our TVs were not that big then. Like a 32-inch was a 32 massive 32-inch was tally. a monster. <laughs> mm. So those dots are taking up some real estate. Mind you, the framing around those televisions also quite massive. Huge. Sick.
There was also someone on Reddit suggested that perhaps it was TV3 preparing audiences for the launch of their own TV3 logo, which would soon appear in the corner to get people used to having something <laughs> there. <laughs> oh. And people look, are we just so don't know. Funny. People are it's funny. It's just so cute to think about this like real tawdry promotion gripping a nation and giving rise to all of these kind of different interpretations. Uh, and yet we don't remember it. <laughs> I know. Well, someone out there does. Like if someone this, does. We're doing this If you're for listening you. here and you have a tally dot, oh my god, or you have a television with residue on it, <laughs> or you won a Holden Barina <laughs> in the year 2000, <laughs> or a lovely club please. med trip, or a club med trip, or 333 3.333 recurring thousand dollars, <laughs> please get in touch. We need to hear from the tally dot community out there. Um, Tara Ward, no doubt, has done more digging and has unearth things. I think she's found the actual guy who invented the technology. Wow. So Ooh. there'll be a scoop to be had there. Um, but that's kind of the story. That's the saga of Tally Dots. I mean, have we had anything like it since? Probably just what you're mentioning, Jane, like the on-air code words and things. I know TVNZ On Demand did a thing, I think earlier in the year, where they hid things in certain episodes of shows. And so you just had to like watch all of TVNZ mm. On Demand. Mm. <laughs> they did. It was yeah. great promotion. Um. But yeah, I mean, could we ever have it again? Yes. No. <laughs> Still dividing the nation to this day. Hey, don't forget that uh, if you are enjoying uh, these old sad people chatting away on the microphones, <laughs> there's more of that available to you. And that's a terrible ad. Uh, on our paid Substack, there's no no dots there. You don't have to do anything except for just enjoy the content. Plenty there for free, but even more if you're a paid up subscriber, go to therealpod.substack.com uh, for the Real Pod Extra and find some bits there. Thank you for joining Merch us. Merch idea. Yeah. Real Pod Tally Dots. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Imagine. Yeah. This is how really it all good. starts, by the way. It's just a couple of dummies in a room <laughs> coming up with a harebrained idea and making it happen <laughs> across the nation. <laughs> Is that the end of our tally jot, dot journey? Do you think we've made it? Jelly <laughs> jot, <laughs> jelly jelly tot. I feel Whoa. very, I feel very uh, dotted. Yes, thank you, Alex. That was We're a absolutely journey. dotty. Well, thank you, Jane. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Tara. Daniel. To be yeah, fair, yeah, big thanks must go to Wayne Lewis for first bringing this to our attention, and the entire award for going through the entire internet to find this information. Um, and thank you all for remembering with us. That's the tagline now. Yeah, right? Know. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Duncan. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network in partnership with Spark Business Lab. Kia ora e te iwi, te Ahe Butler here, podcast manager at The Spin-Off. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts, consider supporting our mahi by signing up to become a Spin-Off member at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.